Let us all rise together, we pray, the Regina Chaili. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Queen of Heaven, rejoice, Alleluia. For he whom you did marry to bear, Alleluia. Has risen as he said, Alleluia. Pray for us to God, Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary, Alleluia. For the Lord has truly risen, Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who gave joy to the world, to the resurrection of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Grant, we beseech thee, that through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, his mother, we may obtain the joys of everlasting life. Through this same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the noon 30-day Regina Chaley challenge <laughs> and the theme of the power of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> that's a mouthful. I can never remember that. <clears throat> Who are you though? <clears throat> you just distracted her ID. Oh, Five, no. four, three, <laughs> two, uh -huh. one. Iggy, what is the why time is, for? Why do we have a number five? It, this episode brought to you by the letter five. Okay. Number five. I'm Joy. I'm Patrick. We're the Campbells. We're with Iggy, Grandpa, and you're watching Joyful Hope TV. Live from the Joyful Hope Studio. At the House of Prayer for All Peoples. Serve Young. We are here to serve, and, and you, you are, are family fam here. So let us pray our passcode for the places. So of your refuge. secret refuge. So when we get okay so when we do the next big healing workshop and you guys get there before we start we're all gonna go three two one and then we're gonna say come on iggy we're gonna say aeus in obito nostro presencia muni amor and then i'm gonna say now what does that mean and you're all gonna say May, May he strengthen, strengthen us, us with, with his, his presence, presence at, at the, the moment, moment of, of our death. death. Amen. Amen. I mean, that's just so powerful because when we look at the moment of our death, it's there's always like a repentance, a conversion, you know, and our eyes are, you know, just fixed to the eternal life, to all the promises of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So... For me, it's very, very powerful that our Lord has given us this ministry where we're actually reciting the prayers of the St. Benedict Medal. The St. Benedict Medal is the most powerful sacramental of the Catholic Church. Did you know that? Did you know it's the most powerful sacramental? Isn't that awesome? And we wear the shirt every day. But, you know, when you wear a Benedict Medal, if you have a, a Benedict and Crucifix, the one right behind me, is the most powerful sacramental. This is what I said when when we were going through, um, you know, when we had one of our sons who was possessed and we had to go through exorcism, and when the priest came up with the cross, and and our son didn't see him coming, but he was repelled by the Saint Benedict cross. I said, "What is going on there? What is going on there?" And it wasn't until later that I asked the priest, and the priest said, oh, yeah, the St. Benedict Cross has prayers of exorcism, and it's the most powerful. And I said, how come we don't know this? How come everybody doesn't have a cross like this? If Satan is so repelled by this cross, why isn't the Catholic Church promoting it? Why aren't we doing it? Why doesn't everyone have one? And, you know, he didn't have an answer for me. 
So I felt, okay, I'm going to make them. I'm going to make them for my family and my friends. So, well, it's also the fruit of our oblation, which means if you study the rule of St. Benedict under a Benedictine abbey, and uh, they teach you about the rule of St. Benedict, then after this more than a year training studying the rule of St. Benedict, uh, you get to get uh, an oblation, which means you make a promise to God, which the Lord God honors as another covenant, that you're going to live your life in a Benedictine way. You know, and, and you know, so we're, we're really blessed to be able to do that and then share that with other people. But never once did we ever feel like we had to push yeah. the Benedictine rule on other people. I mean, I don't, you don't have to be a Benedictine to join the APC. In fact, we have many different flavors of Catholicism in the APC. We even have people that are participating in the Greek Orthodox, uh, the Ukraine Orthodox, and they watch the APC. Amazing. Uh, let's do a pop quiz, Iggy. Mm -hmm. I want to know what kind of um, flavor everybody is, whether you are uh, Franciscan or Dominican, or you could be, what was St. Teresa of Lisieux? She was um, Carmelite. Carmelite. You can be, um, you know, this is not a nationality. This is what is your flavor of spirituality? So within the Catholic Church, if you would say the Catholic Church was an ice cream flavor, ice cream, vanilla, right? Then you have different flavors of ice cream. What kind of flavor of Catholicism are you? So this is it. You guys ready? We're going to get to know everybody. Bob, Bob quiz. quiz. <laughs> Chuck. <laughs> quiz, 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 quiz. Okay, we're back. Chuck said... Catholic. Is Catholic. <laughs> so well, you're, well, I think it's Benedictine because everything in his house <laughs> largely is Benedictine. And he promotes the St. Benedict Medal. And he'd always get in fights with the Franciscans, so that's a good Yeah. Good, a good, <laughs> that's a good sign. It's a good sign that he's Benedictine <laughs> if you're getting fights with the Franciscans. <laughs> so let's see. Sabrina is Carmelite. Whoa! Carmelite is what my dad is. That's beautiful, I love Sabrina. The Carmelite spirit. Uh, Mike says, blessing to all. Mike's catching up. He's like, I don't know what you guys are talking about, but bless okay, you. Mike, what's your spirituality? What's your spirituality? So we're, Joy and I are Benedictine, uh, but, you know, there's so many different spiritualities. In fact, I can't even name all of them. You know, salt? Isn't salt a different spirituality? Yeah, well, salt is a devotion to Our Lady of the Most Holy right. Trinity. Right, so, so what is So they're Trinitarian. They're Marian and they're Eucharistic. Wow! So that's so that's salt servants of no society. Society of Our Lady of Our Lady of the Most Holy, Holy Trinity. Trinity. So that's salt, but that would be a different, right? Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Kathy Smoy says, "Cherry red flame of the Holy Spirit by means of Saint Benedict." Oh, I love that, <laughs> I love. That's, so this oh, I love that ice cream flavor. I mean, that's a great flavor. I mean, okay, so what, that's so beautiful. What, what Mike Mike just came in. So what we're talking about, Mike, is that if you look at Catholicism as an ice cream, it's vanilla. There's so many different flavors of of that ice cream, and we're just saying we've never pushed our Benedictine, even though we're, we're always talking about it. We didn't push the rule like as a means for you to be a part of of what we're doing or our deliverance ministry or healing ministry, we never said you have to be Benedictine because we are open to everybody's particular uh, spirituality because we're all Catholic. It's all, it's all good. But we're just trying to see where you guys are coming from. What is your, what is your spiritual flavor, spirituality flavor? So Joy, when first met Joy, <clears throat> Joy felt that she was more Franciscan. I was Franciscan because my dad was very Franciscan. He was raised by Franciscan friars for since he was eight years old. He was orphaned, and the Franciscan adopted him, and they stayed with him. And uh, since he was smart, he had two engineering degrees, so they made him like the accountant and administrator of a big parish in the Philippines of the Franciscan in, in their corporate headquarters. So everything in him 
He's so Franciscan. So he just has few clothes, and he doesn't <laughs> throw clothes. Even if his clothes have holes, he calls it the air-conditioned T-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> so he said it's cooler with the holes. And, you know, he doesn't have a watch. He doesn't, you know, everything in his life is simple. He just saves money because for... Because Franciscans had poverty. So yeah. They might be, so you know. he saved his money. He... You know, he has a good job and he saves his money just for his family and the education of his children. So since we don't, not everybody has to, to go into a certain spirituality to feel that they're a part of it, you can have um, a love for a certain spirituality and put that down. It's just to, to get where you're coming from. You know, the things that, you know, you find, like a lot of people will, if they like, you know, like St. Therese. If you love the readings of St. Therese, you might feel that you're more Carmelite. Yeah. Um, Dominican. Dominicans are known to be preachers. They wear really cool capes, and they're all in white, and they would preach. A lot of them would preach. And, and, and so if you feel like you're a preacher, you might feel more in line with the Dominican spirituality. So there's a different, all these different kinds of things. What about and if you? you? Don't know, what was your spirituality before St. Uh, Benedict? Well, you know, it's so funny because uh, when, I, when I was a teenager and I came back to the faith, I went to the retreat house with Jesuits. So you were more Jesuit? Yeah. That doesn't sound right. I know, right. I know. I mean, but I... I love the Jesuits and I because that's where I learned from. So I wanted to read more. I wanted to read more about my spirituality. I was I was uh, reading more Augustine and St. Thomas Aquinas and I loved the theology of the Jesuits. They were very educated, very smart, so I admired them. I don't know if I could say that I was a Jesuit, but that was where I started to come back into the faith when I was a when I was a young uh, adult. Um, oh, passionist! Mike says he's a passionist. We have some passionist friends. That's really cool. Um, Paulette says I, she was raised Franciscan at St. Joseph School Sisters. Wow! I like Mary Jane. She's got like a, a suicide. What they do with the sodas where you put everything, all the flavors together. She says, Benedictine, Franciscan, Dominican, Marian, Eucharistic, love the faith, and pray to never stop learning. Amen. Yeah. I mean, each of the spirituality have um, like wisdom, uh, charisms in it. So it's really good to really discover it. But whatever we'll end up with is a the grace from God, and eventually God will lead you there. Well, you know, I, and I also believe that that um, you know that we're different, and God knows that we're all kind of different flowers. Some flowers are are better in the shade. Some flowers are better in the field. Some flowers are better alone. Some flowers are better in a crowd. Some flowers are good with weeds, but they're all. It takes different kinds of flowers, and that's the, what the Lord the Lord understood. He he. And within Catholicism, there were multiple uh, expressions of the same foundation. And I, 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 I never felt a need to say that somebody always had to be Benedictine or I didn't like. In fact, I have to, I have to honestly say, I've been more disapp disappointed going to certain Benedictine abbeys than I have been impressed. There are some that I'm really impressed with. But right? I think one but, one of the reasons, though, our Lord brings us and made us Benedictine is uh, just to get get the good part of it and mm -hmm. then apply it to our family life, which really worked. When we became Benedictines, that's the only time we experienced peace. Like we were in an exorcism turmoil, yeah. exorcism-related turmoil. We were constantly and dealing we were with like, a demon every day, many, many demons within the same the same situation. We you were know? like spiraling down. Like we don't know what peace is anymore. Right. We didn't know what to expect it's day like, for it's day. It's weird. The anxiety is high. You know, we pray many different prayers from many different spiritualities. And it's working for a time and then it's not working anymore. And it, it always helped. And we were better did then. We'd stop and we'd pray. Our bell would ring. We'd ring the bell for the kids. And then we'd gather and we'd pray. And there was peace. And we'd forget about everything that we were dealing with, and we just prayed. So I mean, and I, and I think that the other um, religious flavors had similar things, where they would they would do their divine office, and a lot of them actually modeled their spirituality, like Saint Francis, 
after the Benedictine rule because St. Benedict was born in 4080. Yeah. And it's that was the fall of the one, Roman Emperor. It's one of the oldest uh, religious order, you know, in the Catholic faith. So, of course, they derive a lot of things from the Benedictine. And one of that is the Benedictine prayers. Because in the Benedictine prayers, the actual liturgy of the hours or the divine office is their actual work. So they don't need to evangelize outside. They don't need to preach outside the confines of the abbey because by them meeting our Lord several times a day, that's their magnum opus. That's their work. You know, that's the equivalent of their main, 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 what they live for. So they go in the morning at certain times of the day, and then they pray these prayers for the church. And then that's it. The manual labor is just part of their um, way of living. You know, their studies is just part, but the main one is their ability to go at certain times of the day to pray you know, the divine office. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of people responding. Uh, St. Benedict was an exorcist? Yes, he was. And he wasn't even a priest. Uh, St. Benedict was an abbot. And so he was the father of a community, and he really never said mass. But Satan hated him, and he could cast him out. And he is actually the saint for exorcists. Very powerful exorcist. He tied two sticks together, made a cross, and Satan was repelled. It was amazing. Now, Sabrina has a question <laughs> that I, I, I'm, I really don't know what she means, but I don't, I don't want to embarrass her. So, so uh, Sabrina, uh, email me or, or text me your question because I've got doctor friends that are pretty good with, with after effects, with uh, that, that, uh, the, co and the, the O and the V and the I and the D. So um, tell me what you're talking about. I don't know if, I don't know what, what it is, but I know somebody who could probably help you. So, um, and, uh, Kathy Simone says, I taught by Franciscan nuns for 12 years, even tried to join the con <laughs> their convent. My father named us all after Dominican saints. He attended a passionist retreat for 30 years. Now I feel Benedictine, passion, Franciscan, Dominican. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah, yeah, I love I love that Sunday. You know, Sunday has different flavors, yeah. It's okay to live that way. It's okay to, it's, it's, it's ignites your fire, the God, and you relate to people that way. Um, it, it's really good. I, I, I love the Benedictine rule when it's, when it's in, uh, you know, in, you know, in full form. Um, but you know, not everybody who's in the Benedictine Abbey is, is altogether holy, right? So they're just people that are trying to live a rule, right? So, you know, once I start to realize that, you know, you know, it's sort of like learning what it would be like to be a monk. And then you actually get to the monks and you're like, hey, you guys need to get your act together. <laughs> you know, it's like, wow, they're a bunch of just a bunch of men trying to do what God wants them to do. Um, OK, so, Tony, you're good. You're good right now. You are open. You're open. So, you know, um, you know, I've had people who who follow Joy and I, who who changed where they were and became more Benedictine, because they they loved us and what we stood for, and that's how like Bless you, the other saints did it. So like, if you feel drawn to Saint Faustina, you would like want to know what made Faustina Faustina, right? It's like, what was she doing? How did she do it? And then when you find out her spirituality, you say, well, that's what I like, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you don't see what I'm saying? <laughs> You're um, having an allergy. Thing. So, you know, what's really funny is I got a pop quiz. Iggy pop quiz. Okay, this is the pop quiz. Okay. Um, not all the popes, all the popes that we have, right? They, there was a reason why all of a sudden they all changed the way they dress. And it was because of one pope and their spirituality, right? And they went from wearing different colors to all of a sudden white. They all wear white. And from that pope on, they still, to this day, the, the, the pontiff of Rome wears white. What religious order influenced the... The chair of Peter. Pop quiz. Quiz, 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 quiz. quiz. 
Okay, so Tony, if since since you don't know what you want to be and you just like being Catholic, that's okay. We're going to adopt you as a Benedictine. Okay, that's it. Nobody else adopted her. She's ours. Tony Orta is Benedictine now. <laughs> We're going to own you. Okay, Chuck, Chuck. Okay, so the question is, what... What spirituality influenced um, the popes, and now they all wear white? So they so they were wearing different colors. They were wearing it, and, and there was no rhyme or reason. But all of a sudden, after a certain pope who had a certain spirituality, from now on, they all wear white. What spirituality was that that influenced the what the pope now wears always? But well, let me ask you this: What is the what color does the Pope wear? What color does the Pope wear? White. Okay, white. Right. Okay, since you guys don't know, I'm going to tell you. Chuck guess. Jesuit. Susie says, "Duh." <laughs> Susie says, "God." Um, those are good guesses. Sure. Sabrina says, "Dominicans." Saint Dominic. P.S. I don't stink. <laughs> Everything else does. <laughs> Okay, that's what I wanted to get on. I, I didn't know. Are you sure if, I didn't. I didn't know if so. Sabrina says because I don't stink. I wonder because the the way she phrased the question is, I got this smell and I want to get rid of it. And I was like, poor girl. Oh. I just wanted to clarify that. So it's every everyone else smells around Sabrina. <laughs> okay. So it's his it's her sense of smelling then. Okay, yes, her sense of smell. Dominicans is the right answer, Sabrina. All right. Dominicans were white. So there was a Dominican Pope who came in and he became Pope. And then from that time on, all the popes were white after him. They looked at it as a tradition that they, everyone was used to them being white, and that now they were white. So yes, Mary Jane is correct. Innocent the fifth was Dominican, and he was Pope, and then now everybody else wears white, even though they're not Dominican. <clears throat> so this, <clears throat> our Pope now, Pope Francis, is Jesuit, and he wears white like a Dominican. Dun, dun, dun. And uh, that's just the way that is. Quack, 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 I don't get well, it. Well, just as we, we, we started um, this episode on asking your spirituality, uh, we just like to distinguish spirituality versus a third order. Um, in the third order, you associate yourself in a formal way with a religious order. And the religious order that is in existence right now is not all, we're not talking about, we're talking a difference between religious order versus religious communities, okay? So there came to a point where the Vatican said there's no more new religious order. It stopped with the Jesuits. I thought it stopped with Mother Teresa of Calcutta. No, with the Jesuits. So the Jesuits are the last religious order. And then after that, our religious communities. Mm -hmm. So like, like again, the church is, is constantly forming like a tree. So the tree starts out as, as an acorn, and then it starts to form and grow and branch out. And they, the church pruned the orders and said there will be no more orders after the Jesuits. So people were still filing to be orders. The church has also did this several other times. The church did this for Monsignors recently. Monsignor was a position of high prestige that people would get, and it's not like a priest, and it's not quite a bishop. It's almost like, I know you really wanted to be a bishop, so we're going to make you a Monsignor. You know, it's like, don't worry. You're my friend. I'm going to make you Monsignor. So then a bishop would... A certain bishop would get to the top, and then all his best friends and best buddies would be Monsignors. And so what Pope Francis tried to do in his pontificate is to try to, to um, limit the ladder climbing. So to, to make it like, a, a, you know, when you try to go up the ladder of a company, right? 
and and become better than everybody else. Uh, he wanted to stop that kind of um, achievement setting that you know I am a Monsignor, and I am a Cardinal, and I'm you know so um, because the the Monsignors, you know they don't they're not quite auxiliary bishops. They don't have that kind of jurisdiction it really is kind of like a an honorary role that you're special you know i mean you lived your whole life you were shooting for this and you couldn't get it you know yeah so uh, what you're saying is there is a little bit of pride with the name of the monsignor right right so So i think for me though what i'm trying to hit home here is you know the church sort of like decreed it which means uh, in ca- they're part of the canon law, right? So if it's part of the canon law, it it's saying that uh, secular or third orders are actually, um, you know, needing spiritual discernment so you can be formed in that religious order. And as you are being formed, the final output of that will be for you to make this out a vow and a promise and a covenant to God that's related with the religious order that you associated yourself to. So unlike when we declare uh, by ourselves that we're Marian, we are Eucharistic, you know, this is our own um, self-study. Yeah, this is what we like. Our Lord's helping us. I like the Virgin Mary. Yeah, yeah we're. I'm gonna. My devotion right now is Marian. I'm gonna do Marian stuff. Oh, I understand uh, the Eucharist. I'm gonna be, you know, Eucharistic right now. So the grace of God for the third order is now a calling. Yes. He's gonna call you, and he's gonna sort of like uh, invite you. And you don't know if you're not invited yet. Don't be yeah. in a hurry. Don't, don't feel you're not special. Don't feel like you have to. It's not like that, okay? No. It's a calling because in that calling, you're going to be asked to make a vow after your formation, after your training. So is that vow with God of no significance, right? So we as laity are given this opportunity to associate ourselves with a religious order. The religious order is a community that has given their life, and in their life to God, they have uh, received certain charism that helps them perfect their journey to God. Yeah, it's, right? it's, it's sort of like a, a, a church blessing upon the laity to unite itself with the graces that are established with these communities or a society or um, you know um, an order right so when we became benedictine I I felt there was graces poured upon when we signed their papers because we studied for about two years was it two years uh, almost year, two years. A year and a yeah. half. We it's studied. just one year, but because of you know, it's uh, you know, it sees you know, there are seasons like summer and all those stuff. We have to extend. Lift it straight up. But I would think it's um, tighten that. Twelve months. The other one. Without the vacation, so it can go until February or, you know, furthermore. But for us. Uh, yeah, it took more than a year. But I loved it. I loved. I loved learning. I loved pretending I was a monk. I, I loved. Um, I loved indulging into the spirituality of Saint Benedict. I loved learning about the Desert Fathers. I loved learning about Saint Benedict and the Rule, and we would read from the Rule. I loved being mentored by Sister Gertrude. Um, she was. Some of you guys know Sister Gertrude, and we should have her on the show pretty soon. Our Mother Gertrude was was so kind, generous, loving, and she really took us where we're at because, you know, when we were, when we we had a preconceived idea of what is holy and she kind of dismantled that very gently. She didn't beat us up, but you know what she did do is she opened up our hearts um, in a way that um, was gentle and it was edifying. You know, she just, she really helped us understand humility 
and um, it, it was it was uh, because she is very humble. She's very humble, but humble doesn't mean I grovel and and I'm nobody and everybody's better than me. That she would call that. What would she call that? She would call that false humility, mm -hmm. right? When you say, "Oh, you know," like she if um, she would say, "Patrick, you're a very good speaker." So you shouldn't go around telling people, "Oh, I don't like to speak," or "You know, I'm not a very good speaker," because that's false humility. It's really where where were you going with that? If you had said, "Oh, I'm not that great of a speaker," you would be lying. You are a good speaker, so it's not arrogant for you to say that you're a good speaker. Well, you know, she you don't really say you're a good speaker. No, I don't. But you she's just... trying to she's trying to get out what a false humility is, in 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 what humility is. Humility is embracing the truth of who you are. She's like, she says, I'm, uh, I'm a sinner, Lord, but you love me anyway. In fact, I'm your favorite, you know, and that's not false humility. It's, it's the truth according to how God sees her, right? If you knew how much you were loved by God, you would say that you were God's favorite, right? But it's not false humility. False humility is saying, um, you know, uh, denying the truth in a situation. It's like putting yourself down uh, when you know it's not the truth. Maybe fishing for compliments is false humility. Like, you know, let's say you, you get your hair done and you get an outfit and he goes, oh, I just threw this on. Oh, you know, my hair just turned out good today. Normally my hair looks yeah, awful. It, and you know, you're like, I no, your proper, hair looks really good. I think the proper response is thank you. Right, right. right. Oh, glory to God. You yeah, know, there you go. Give that. it up to God, right. So I just want to bring it back to the... Uh, uh, to the third orders because I feel there's something here that you know God wants us to get uh, and another important element to the third order because when the kids were like teenager I brought them to a retreat where the retreat master he was a priest told us that uh, if you try to answer the call of God to a third order it's sort of like spiritually uh, level you up and then you know I just believe him for whatever that's worth I really didn't get many downloads related to it but right now I'm getting it that's why uh, it brings more substance to what we promise our Lord and one of the downloads um, that I getting is really because why why is God bringing this up are some of you ready to go to the next step and affiliate yourself in a proper formation. Maybe someone needs to hear that that going yeah going into a, a third order uh, isn't taking a vow of poverty. Yeah. It isn't taking. So a, uh, I think it's really just to clarify it and see if there's a call for you here. So we also have to know that this is defined in canon law that um, it's seven o six that in canon law it, you know attaching yourself. To a religious order is also following a papal approved rule of life so your your way of life is just not oh this is what I'm gonna do for now you know so you're trying to go to a state of life which is approved by the Pope which means it has a blessing and a set of graces there you're gonna be spiritually formed and you're going to have spiritual direction from, you know, an important person in that religious order that's going to be mandated to share the charism, to share, you know, the graces that is bestowed on a certain religious order. Okay. And why is that? Because I think when um, the Pope uh, or the church established this religious order, it wants the graces just not to be in that religious, uh, not just with the priests, the clergy, or the sisters and the nuns. I think the very essence of the church is to share, to penetrate all facets of the body of Christ. Oh, right? I'm just getting a whole down. I know, this I'm is, getting it this too. Is, this is, this is oh what the goodness. Lord meant by I am the vine and you are the branches. You can't do anything outside of me. And so um, a lot of our our connections, like, like Chuck says this, Sister Gertrude is awesome. 
Now, Chuck would not know about Sister Gertrude if Sister Gertrude didn't make me one of her oblates and I branched out. See, I am the branches, came back to the vine with Sister Gertrude and the queen, the Our, Our Lady Queen of Peace Monastery and then God. Right, because I got, I got, I got a third order. So I was branching out. So all those people that are in laity, you're the branches out to the world that help them bring in funding, help them bring in prayers, help them reach out uh, to the teachings that Sister Gertrude tried to teach us. Yeah, but the, you're learning a lot from them. For you me, know? the most important part of it is deeper. the The most important for me is a rule of life that is sanctioned by the church, which has the charism in it. And fourth, the fruit of that is you being able to make a covenant with God. A covenant mm. with God that again carries another set of graces. Because I'm gonna tell you, I'm just gonna testify to you that it was only when we made that promise that Patrick started to make this St. Benedict crosses. He was oh, sure. inspired. I became a different mother, you know. So there was something that happened to me and to our family, and we had peace, the peace that we were searching for, right? So the question of Mary Jank here, would you discuss the state of life versus vocation in relation to the third order? Because as a third order, you're not a religious, right? No. You're not a clergy. And you're not even allowed to wear... Uh, a habit or a yeah. monk's outfit, nothing yeah, like that. Yeah, you're not. Because you're different from the clergy, right? The best we can do is have our T-shirt, t -shirt, right? <laughs> so this is my garment of grace. But um, the thing, though, just to answer Mary Jank's question, the, vo the word vocation eventually, the call by God, um, eventually went to the laity, but it was originally reserved for those in the clergy and for the religious life. But we now use it as our vocation of motherhood. You know, it's now used in the laity. It's sort of but, like within, in the rule, you can take that rule and apply when he says for the abbot to make these decisions and what do you do with a rebellious you know, person in your in your your group, you can take that and apply what Saint Benedict re recommends. And like, wow, I'm using the Benedictine rule to figure out some hard problems in my family. Yeah. So you're able so, to take those things. Yeah. So that's more in relation to the state of life. So what happens to our life is we're in different stages. We're in different states. Sometimes we're in a difficult state. Sometimes, sometimes in we're state in a trouble. <laughs> you know. So. You know, sometimes we have difficulty in just, you know, un unity in our family life. So there are many facets of our life in our call. And um, now our state of life is, if in our state of life is we have an elderly parent, you know, that you have to take care of. And you have children that needs healing. You can't go to a round-the-clock prayer. Yeah. Your state of life is permissible as a lady, as a third order, that you fo focus first on your first vocation. Right. I hope that answers it. Mary. So Sabrina says this. She says, are you concerned training us to be third order Benedictines? The answer would be no. Not because it's bad or not because I don't believe in it. It's because I think it's what we're doing here in the APC is bigger than just the Benedictine rule. I think we've got a lot of flavors and a lot of things that we can all learn together. I think what we're really uh, here for is to listen to God and deliver the message of God in, in, to help you for your mission. You know, we're praying together as a family. It's so close. Our fam, you know, you are close to us and you love us and we love you. So it's more of a family thing. Our interest in you is to love you like family. We don't want you to go astray. You know, just like a family, you always fight for your family because they're your family, yeah, right? You get hurt, we get hurt. Yeah. Now, when eventually our Lord mandates us, Joy, it's time for you to start an association of the faithful who will do, do this ministry, then it's a different thing. So for us right now, I think what I'm receiving from our Lord is really some of you might might be invited or are being invited by our Lord to consider the next level of spirituality. You know, it was, it was funny when we were, uh, I forgot which exorcist we were working with at the time, but this was earlier on 
in us, our training, and we started to go out and help and be a prayer team. The exorcist said, after deliverance, after you know you you go through a deliverance and you 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 recapture your your life, he says it's important that people find a spirituality, a community, something that they can go to for um, strength, for encouragement, for prayers, for being edified in your your church. Because when you go back to the world, like three days after a conference, you're going to encounter a resistance to God and what you just got delivered from. And so the only way out of that is to have, to be associated with some kind of spirituality so you can keep on track because Satan's going to try to push you off the track. Your, your spouse is going to say, oh, that was just a, you know, nice week. And you're going to lose it within a week if you don't have some kind of family to connect to. And, you know, it was a default. I don't think we tried this, but the APC ended up being that kind of, um, spirituality we ended up kind of being that support system to help people especially when you go through a major deliverance your life changes if you've gone through a workshop you've said the deliverance prayers you get it and then you go back but nobody in your ha- your household they don't know what you're talking about they don't know why you're praying all the time in fact they call you goofy and if you don't have like the spirituality or family life or something that to, can bring you and you can feel connected with you're going to wither up and dry. And I think that's what the Lord was talking about, being the vine and we are the branches. We have to be connected to him. If we're not connected to him, if we're not able to get to mass, we start to feel it. We start to dry up. So we need to be connected. So like Mary's question was, how about if I feel like connected with the spirituality and I want to, but they're really far away? Well, Okay, that might be a sign that that's not supposed yeah, to happen. At least for now. So again... Right. It's a, it needs spiritual discernment, okay? And then second, you need formation, okay? But just from our experience, remember, I wanted to be Franciscan. The one that I'm considering is secular Franciscan because I grew up with that spirituality. I said, I'm going to be good at this. My father was holy in this way. He my, became my holy f- this way. Oh, I want to follow that, but... Guess what? That's not what our Lord wanted. Right, and I wanted my my dad was a Carmelite, so he wore the big Carmelite yeah, scapular, and he true. went to Carmelite meetings, and and so I, you know, I grew up reading Saint Teresa, the Flower of Jesus. So I thought more that I was more uh, Carmelite with the brown scapular. So it can be like, for example, in my case, since my dad was already Franciscan, I don't need to be perfected in that anymore because I got it as growing up. So I don't need the training anymore. My father showed it to me through his example, what a Franciscan is all about. I don't know anything about Franciscan. I, I was raised by priests in our diocese who were Jesuits. They preached to to us in our you know in the Philippines when I was growing up. So I don't need to be affiliated with a Jesuit. So what our Lord brings us is to perfect us in in our formation. So it doesn't it's not really just the flavor that we're interested in because we it's a mystery. We don't know what is actually lacking. We don't know what is actually the gap in our spirituality. Only God knows that. Mm-hmm. He gives us inkling. He makes us drawn to certain people. He's really into your free will. You know, and he'll lay things out and he'll let you go after your desires and certain ideas and he'll put stuff in for you. But he's not into controlling you, right? So the going into a third order is about your free will that you want to you want to follow something you're feeling like there's something missing in your life and you need that kind of formation it's to help you be formed as a person so you can be um, sure, assured of your prayers or being heard that you're doing something right that you're on the right path instead of walking through a forest right cuz that's what it is the wilderness and the evil that you encounter is like you're got a machete and, and Tony's walking through the forest, and she is doing a good job. She's clearing the way, but she's working awful hard at it. Now, going into a, a order or a, a third order or, or, you know, is, is like going on the railroad tracks where the path is already clear. You it's just got to step on these. It's a papally approved path. 
So all of a sudden, you're not working so hard cutting through the woods. You've got a clear path that shows you if I follow this, I'm going to get to a certain destination and it's already cleared for you. You just have to walk on the wood planks. So let's and what happens if you step off the wood planks? You kind of stumble, right? So you get back on the, and there's a rhythm to it. So let's right? just say, just for a quick, quick, quick example. So we're Benedictines. Our promise is, the promise that we did in front of God in the Holy Eucharist is our promise uh, to follow the, and the rule of Saint the rule of Saint Benedict as my state of life permits. permits. So what does that mean? If I am in spiritual battle, if I am, you know, if I have problems with my family, all I have to go back to is the rule of Saint Benedict. And then I go from there. I said, okay, <gasps> what does Saint Benedict download. teaches me? Wow. So so my prayers, our prayers here. That's Benedictine, glorifies God. This was meant to be, that we start and end with a Benedictine prayer because this is where our charism flows. So you are filled with what our Lord, the giftings of our Lord, just by, by our third order spirituality. Can you, can you see? Can you see how... You know, our Lord is the one who set us up. We just are obedient to whatever His plans are, to the way He wants to evangelize. I mean, I'm getting a download. Thank you, Jesus, because it helps us, you know, reestablish our balance, our stability. Mm -hmm. Because in the Benedictine life, you have to be stable in your core. Yeah. This, we call that the stability in your life, in, so, in your vows, in so, what you promise God. So one of the people had said to us, um, they saw our ministry and they said, wait, you guys are Benedictines, but you're missionary Benedictines? Mission Benedictines always, and so it was kind of a slam on what we're doing. They said, Benedictines don't go out. They find a place, they hunker down, and they're stable, and they learn how to live in the land that they are, and they don't go out. Well, People come to them. Just remember, in the history of the Benedictine monasteries, they were an essential part of Western civilization. Right. Without them, who would have written the Bible? Who, who would, would have preserved all those relics? The reason why we have written music is owed to the Benedictines, right? They, they gave us notes and how to write music um there are so many things how to plant how to secure a castle how how to you know they they have so much that they that they received in their their rule they've been along for a long time but what, what i was trying to say is is that in the benedictine in the benedictine rule um there are certain things that will come up and you know like i have a lot of kids and recently, some of the kids had had done certain things. And I'm like, Joy and I were discussing how are we going to handle this situation? And I never once, I didn't think about but it's perfect now. We're going to find out how St. Benedict would have handled this. And then apply that to, to the situation. That's exactly what I did. Do you remember the time, this was again, I think last year or the year before, when we had an attack with some of our APs? APC members who attacked us in a way where they left and we were really under attack and you know there were just rumors spreading around this person silly was just, rumors it's that's, silly because that's not really we can't react because we were on a mission so it was really painful for us and hurtful and the only way we were able to battle with that is do you, do you remember the level when we did the divine office so that's Benedictine and that's what we do right so when we started to do that it all died away because that's working in our spirituality so our strength in deliverance is our ability to be benedict in us you know so our strength to help you is an in our benedictines benedictines are really known for hospitality so when you come in we have to treat everyone who comes to us that as Christ. Je that Christ and Jesus. There's a lot of good things, but I, I love the Franciscans. I love the Carmelites. Um, you know, all the different spiritualities, the Dominicans. We all get along. I think I don't think it's it's like different armies merging, 
And I think we have to have unity. So that's why I wouldn't go and just go into Benedictine because yeah. I, I would lose my Dominican brothers. I would and I would no. lose my Franciscan sisters. I would lose so much. This time in the church, as we go forward into this darkness, we need to unite the clans. We need, we need to focus on Christ. We need unity because Satan doesn't care what flavor of ice cream you like. He's going to get you. He's going to nail you. So we all have to come together and use our special God-given powers to, to fight the evil one and learn from each other. Because I believe that the Benedictine rule isn't stop, it hasn't stopped developing. St. Benedict says, if you find a better way, go for it. That's what he says at the end. He has this big, thick rule book, and it's yeah, very hard to it's read. It's thick. It's, it's really tiny. It, it's, but... it's really tiny, but it's compact. It's like super, super contemplative. You you only have to read a sentence, and then you're like, okay, I got I to gotta like... It's like we meditate on, on just one line. One line, and then you go on <laughs> to... The, you can't just like, oh, I'm going to read this one one night. No, there's just too much... It's not an it's enjoyable a dance. Book. It's not no, it's a rule. It's like It's this, a rule. What should you how should what, you, you know, conduct life? Right. You know? And so and then at the end, after all those rules, he says, But if you come up with something better, go for it. I, well, that's humility for me. It's like, you know, so he's open to changing. And then so you'll go to different abbeys and they do things different. Yeah. And it's up to the abbot, really. It's up to the dad. In your own house, you gotta you gotta make things hey, work. I think one of the reasons our uh, last uh, workshop in St. Bernard Abbey was so powerful was because there was an, a grace there too, right? Because oh, yeah, we were, we were in the Abbey. inside our own. The exorcist was the one who prayed over, you know, the sacramentals. That was awesome. So it was really awesome. Yeah. But again, um, not all the abbeys are understanding uh, the mission life that's required for these times. I think the reason God is calling us is because there's really great evil in the world that's affecting families. Mm -hmm. If And if there's a little that we can do, you know, to bring light or to shed light on how family can go back to peace, can how their, you know, chaotic life can be restored back to a life of prayer as being the foundation, right? I think that's a big help. Like, yeah. there are many um, prescriptions on how to attack the devil. Yeah. Latin prayers. I mean, oh, there's so many. But we tried all of that. The only one that worked for us is meeting God at different points of the day. That was to bring us to peace. Um, and that, that helps when you start to pray, too. Um, I, I, I think that it's... It's all good it, because everyone's going to have their own way and they're going to feel, you know, like you really attached to a certain way and you just have to, I would say, just give yourself all to it right now. Like right now, we're in the APC and we're and we're learning together. Instead of being half on board, give yourself all to it. Whatever God is, is feeding you at the time and you're getting fed, embrace that because because that's not... Um, it's it's supernatural, right? So that's what I would have to say. I think I think if I were to at the time in my life when we were Benedictines, I felt like before we were Benedictines we weren't being fed, and I felt the only place I was being fed was from Sister Gertrude. And when Sister Gertrude said to me, she goes, "Wouldn't you feel better with one of those male role models? One of the how about the abbot? And they've got a Benedictine uh, third order. Why don't you do that?" And I'm like, I don't get anything out of them. I'm not fed by them. I don't feel comfortable with them. I don't feel, I don't feel, I said, everything that you say makes sense to me. And so I'm going to stick with it. So you know how Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. My sheep hear me, my voice, and they know me and I know them. And so that's where I was getting fed. And, and so nothing else mattered. You know, nothing else mattered. And it helped form me to where, where we are today. And I think that's what that we're all in. We just have to know that where we're getting fed and to, to, to cling on to that and to really give give yourself fully to the teaching God's giving you, not halfway. I wouldn't, I think if I were to have been skeptical with sister, I wouldn't have learned. I really had to give myself that God was talking through her and I needed to listen. You know, I needed to, to become a better person now because of what was going on in my life. I needed to learn as much as I could. And and she was really good about being a mom, even though she was never a mom. 
you know, she was really good. And she still is. I just got a letter from her yesterday, you know, uh, confirming a lot of the messages that we got that we're getting. And uh, you know what? She wants to be there with Father Jim on in October with us at the um, uh, Rosa Mystica. Oh, when that happens, I'll just be quiet because we are before the best of the best speakers in the spiritual realm. Oh, Sister Gertrude. Was there Gertrude, Father Blonde, and you? Right. No. I'll just be quiet with all the APC and we're going to pray. No, that would be something if she got up and talked. I mean, she's an amazing speaker. I didn't want you to invite her. I mean, that will seal the deal. Wow. Should she's I ask sad. her to come in and be one of the speakers? <gasps> that oh, would be so, so amazing. No, she, this is what she said. Quiet she said, and let them when is it. the next time? Yeah, I know, right? When's the next time you're going to, to do a, a breakthrough healing workshop with Father Who's Jim? Asking? That was Sister Gertrude. <gasps> Sister Gertrude asked me, <gasps> I want, the sisters and I want to go. When's the next time you're going to, to do a workshop? I'm going to, I'm going to ask her if she will speak. That would be amazing. Well, she's a fountain of knowledge. Wow. And she's so funny and she's so light. She's a great speaker. And she wears the black, all black with the, the little white collar. They dress, they dress her and her and three sisters. And she has Holy Spirit gifts. gifts. Amazing. Yeah, so, so yeah. Prophetic. I think she shared that. I mean, just being, she's our spiritual mother. So I think she just gave it. <laughs> you no, know, I mean, imparted our, it. <laughs> our, our spirituality blossomed after, after we went through. And, uh, oh, I'm just getting chills. Yeah, guys, please consider uh, to join us in uh, the retreat house in Rosa Mystica. It's on, um, let's see, Jen. 21st, Mary, uh, 21st Mary, to 23rd. October, yes. So uh, some of you guys here, like Kathy Simona, Simone get got a cabin. So she had to keep on calling and requesting because there are houses that are limited supply of houses. There's low cabins. Come on, Mike, let's And then go. if you don't get one now, what happens is you'll still go, but you'll get the hotel, which is like maybe five minutes or ten minutes away. And it, you... You know what I'm saying? It's better to share a house with, with everybody than to Sharing have Sharing a house during a retreat is, you know, good for just being... It's be like a campground. You know, we did that when we went over. We did... Remember when we were in Michigan? We were sleeping on the floor of the blow-up bed. Oh, and, yeah. It was so and, and there was all the, all the women. I mean, we had, like, what, six women in one room. And they were, like, talking like... Like it was a pajama party. It was, it was Gail and Donna and uh, you know Mary Jo and Stephanie, and they were all in the room. Beds were all piled up, and they were like giggle snort, giggle snort, giggle snort until some. It was all fun and games until someone fell off the bed, and then it was hilarious. But it was it was really oh, a lot of fun. Gail had a hard time with the stairs there, though, but she was yeah, fine after. Yeah. So let's see. Sabrina has a question. What is the address of the retreat house, please? Oh, can someone be kind enough to, because Talon is not here. Yeah, Iggy doesn't know how to do the research on the computer well. Yeah. Can uh, maybe not Mary, yet. can you put Mary, the, can you put, if you look Kathy up Rosa Simone. Mystica in New York, you're going you're gonna to find, you're going to find a lot of information on it. And they're about ready to put the posters out because Father Hi, Jim, uh, Father Jim uh, is, is he, he had to make some arrangements. Um, you know, it's, it's really amazing that he, he's like, okay, we're going to try to make this work. And he's, he, has to, he has to go to police, so he's canceling another show to come to do, to do uh, this one with us. So we're, we're really looking forward to it. I want, I want everybody who's supposed to be there now. I don't, want, I don't want you to miss the boat. It's going to fill up fast because Father Jim is going to be there. As soon as people see that he's on the bill, I want to get you guys in first. So, you know, um, so because we need the help, you know. And then I'll try the best to see if I can get to get us staying there a little bit before the event. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know. I, I have this is the first time that we've been there. But um, it is beautiful. It is a holy site. It's a mystical site. It's a miraculous site. I saw mystical. When I was praying in Rosa Mystica, to be honest with you, when I was in prayer in adoration, was the most vivid um, my 
my uh, visions were most vivid there. I saw things in color like it was a movie screen. Wow. It was, it was, it was, I was, uh, and I didn't say anything because I was just so blown away. How Lord, the Lord, I saw the Lord walking on in the, in the area. He was on stage and there was auditorium seats all over the place. And it was funny. There was no auditorium seats in Rosa It's Mystica. just plain It's grass. just grass, right? It was just grass. And there's a stage. But I saw Jesus. I'm getting chills. I saw Jesus preaching and preaching to the people. And it was like a rock concert. It was like lights were all over and Jesus would walk to this side and he would talk to the people. And he says, surely I tell you, amen, amen, I say to you. And, and I'm like, I'm just like, wow, he's back. You know, this is the vision that I'm seeing. And as he walks from one part of the stage to the other part of the stage, I see his feet. He's barefoot. And I see the holes in his feet, the holes within in, the, in, in his foot. And as he walks, little dots of blood are laid on the ground, on the, on the stage, little drops of blood. So you see where he's been walking, right? And then all over Rosa Mystica, there's little red footprints because he's walked the whole grounds. And I just thought that was so amazing that I saw these oratorium seats. And just last week, someone donated stadium seating. And they had it delivered, and I and I got so excited. I called the president, Joanne, and I said, "That's exactly what I saw in my vision." But there were more. Boom. There were more Eating auditorium boom. seats, and she said, "More are coming." And now the whole back end of Rosa Mystica is filled with auditorium seats in front of the stage, and I'm like, "Praise God." That Praise was so amazing God. that the Lord showed me that that was what's going to happen. Well, for those of you who do not know, Rosa Mystica just quickly started with a visionary, I think, in Italy, or a mystic in Italy. Uh, Our Lady gave exact longitudinal and latitude uh, numbers Yes, on where Our where Lady she was, wants it. Where she wanted the, the, the chapel to be, the shrine to be. And that's exactly what they did. They followed the instructions, found the place, bought the property, and made a chapel. And that chapel's there. And um, and it's just, I, I just, she said after the Joanne saw my video on, our video on, with Father Jim Blunt, that she knew that we had to be there. And, and she just said, I know that you're supposed to be here. And so that she invited us to stay there. And when we did, it was, it was a, it was a beautiful peaceful place um and so i know you're gonna love it especially uh doing a healing workshop over there it's gonna be the bomb um oh it's already 103 one o'clock 103 okay kathy's giving us the address of rosa mystica ed ed meston ed meston new york one three three five five call five, rosie five. call rosie at 607 206 Two five, two, five two, two three. three. Reserve or go to the website at Ro Rosa Mystica Rosie at gmail dot com. I meant to say email address. That's the email. Thank address. you, Kathy Simone. I'm so excited to see you. I'm again. gonna be so excited to see you. So Kathy's going. We're gonna to try to get uh, Sabrina going now. Oh, if, Angela, don't forget I to hope bring that your you husband. Go. Now, yeah. We'll exercise him. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> All you wives out there, we're going to exercise your husbands for free. <laughs> now everyone's going to go. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to get two burly guys. Hold them down. Hold them down. No, I think you have to reserve the room. Angela, your husband doesn't need an exercise. Kathy, you have to reserve the room. I was not, just teasing. Not as a must, but just because uh, it fills up very fast. Yeah. Or you can share with other of our friends here. Yeah. yeah. We need well, the house for the men. Just look the into it. Yes. Sit, look, look into and then it. We will put the kids away at the back in the forest. Okay. So <laughs> Mary Jane says, be aware that Father Jim's there in September. The Campbells are not listed in the event yet. Father Jim rescheduled the September one. He's going to Belize. And so he's scheduled to come with us. What are you talking about? Mary Jane says, be aware that Father Jim's there in September. The Campbells are not listed in the event oh, yet. He, she didn't get the memo yet. We'll tell her the memo. No, I mean, when you go there, say you, you want to go there to be with the Campbells, they'll understand. Yes. 
down. The Campbells are the, the main the main thing. Remember the heavenly memo is we're gonna do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about it some other time, guys. <laughs> Look at this. Mary Jinx gonna help Sabrina. I'll help pick up the airport. Okay. There Mary you go. Jack Sabrina, is so that's sweet. She's Sabrina, gonna that's pick a sign. Up everyone from Albany, New York. She didn't say she'll pick up everyone from Albany. She said she's gonna help pick up Sabrina from the airport. So that that is cool. Well, we're talking about the APC people. Yeah. That's the family of Mary Jank, do right, Mary? Mary. Mary Jank is the hero. Yeah. Okay, so Me? We're going Ding. Yes, oh, <laughs> that's so sweet um oh, kathy says my cabin God. has a room for three more okay there you go okay kathy is announcing three more people in in her so cabin. you know what i would suggest if you're not like sabrina who's flying over here um I, what i would do is i'd make sure that you got holy you got exercise salt or you get salt and oil and um water you know, if you're driving in the car, that you bring those things so you're prepared, so you don't, you're trying not to get it last minute. Drive in with those things. And if you're going to get exercise, salt, salt exercise by Father Jim, um, I would get salt that has nothing in it but salt. So it could be pink salt, you know, Himalayan salt is fine, or it could be white salt, right? It could be rock salt, ice cream salt, as long, I, but I wouldn't do the iodine. That's something else that's in there. They add in iodine. Go with the plain salt. You just want salt, right? Because it's about the purity, right? I've seen exercise, exercise iodine salt, and that's fine. It works. But, it's but not my understanding pure. is that this sacramental is about purity, so you don't want any additives. Like there's a reason why priests. There was a, a exorcism we were working with. I think it was I, I was talking to to Father Vincent. Um, he was the exorcist, and he said um, there was a time where there was someone manifesting in a house, and he didn't have any holy water. Only, he only had lemonade. So he blessed the lemonade, and it wasn't effective. It was like a little bit effective, but not effective. And he was talking about the, the, the water had to be pure. So he had to go find water then he blessed the water, and then it was like it was burning the person or the demon. The demon was really affected. So you're you're looking for the purity. So pure salt is the best. Uh, water and olive oil, not corn oil. Not uh, if you want to get oil, you you know holy oil. I would get olive oil, virgin olive oil, and if you're really lucky, get Virgin Mary olive oil. Dang. All right. So guys, thank you. Thank you so much for showing your interest. Um, of course, Kathy said there are 14 cabins there. No vaccinated passports needed. T Tony said, I would love to go. So just, you know, keep praying. And for those who cannot afford it, we will raise your prayers in heaven. And uh, I we totally have experienced understand. this in the past in, um, in the Alabama one. Um, you know, there were a few who, who needed help, and there was someone who helped, and this person is now ready to help. <laughs> right. So, yeah, no, notice that, okay, so, Sabrina, I've been there before where I, in fact, before I met Joy, I needed a certain amount of healing before I was ready to even, you know, talk to her on the phone. And that happened the day before I met Joy. So, I get it. You talk God the Father, you ask God. Hi, Ari. Hey Lorraine. Hey Lorraine, we did uh, something on your on your, on your pilgrimage. Hermitage. Yeah, your yeah. I think it was hermitage. the other day. Just look for the. We title. talked about Father Jim. Father Jim's in the thing. You want to see that because we talk about you guys. All good, of course. All good. But so I understand, Sabrina. You need healing before you're healing. Hi Mike. And we're gonna ask for God for that, and and so that you can go be there with us. Okay, Kathy Doe, is this for the family or is this for the individual retreat? Which one? I don't get the question, Kathy Doe. Oh, is this a family event? Uh, I think Father Father uh, Blunt likes to heal the family. Yeah. 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 But if you can't and you just can come, then you just go. That yeah. would be okay, too. 
The most uh, important thing is to pray I, to God. There, there are, to there are, I tell you, there have been people that have come to our conferences with children uh, that didn't want to go. And there have been different reasons why the children didn't want to go. Maybe they were upset at God. They were upset at the priests. They were, they, um, they were manifesting or they had a mental disorder. And I remember there would be a commotion just before the workshop. And like the mother would be trying to pull in the kid from the car. And the car, and there would be a, a you know, no, I don't want to go, you know, and, and, and all this. And I, I went out there and I'd done this several times. I said, let them stay. You come in, right? Because the idea is we were all attached and you were a proxy for your child. So it's more important that the, the one who's accepting the graces gets filled up and gets healed so you can you can go you can go in this situation help it's like if you're all tied together if one of you gets out everyone everyone does a lot better you know they're not so tied up together right so don't worry about whether you can't get your spouse to go and your spouse is opening for you to go i mean the best case scenario is your spouse comes reluctantly and then they have a good time and they get delivered win win right but if that doesn't happen it's more important that you go if they're okay with that. But if it's going to ruin your marriage, <laughs> don't ruin your marriage over a workshop, right? So you got you got you got to pray about those things, right? But I would love it if Lorraine and Mike came. Oh, that would be awesome. I would love it if you all came. Yes. <laughs> it's a reunion. Yes. Okay, guys. Thank you. It's so glorious to be able to talk about these things. Um, the hope of seeing each other again. We can sometimes just do it once a year it's a crazy we do it twice or three times a year but it's always nice to connect with all of each other to meet the other APC members and uh, you know to pray about what God has in store for us for that event is the mystery and that's so uh, that really gets me excited to discover what's the lesson for the October thing who's gonna be there how's the miracle gonna be happening I mean it's all exciting so we're going to look at that with joyful hope in anticipation that God has something in store for each of us. Yeah, and if you need help financially, just let us know. Maybe we all pitch in and it's not, not a big deal at all. But you never know. Maybe God's calling you to be humble and ask for help. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry about those things. Let God worry about those things. Right? Okay, so let's unite in prayer. In the name of the, the Father, and, and the, the Son, and, and the, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. My adorable Jesus, may, may our, our feet, feet journey, journey together. together. May, may our hands, hands gather, gather in unity. unity. May, may our hearts beat in unison. May, may our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. one. May our may ears listen to, to the silence together. together. May, may our glances, glances profoundly penetrate each other. May, may our lips pray together to gain mercy from the eternal Father. Amen. Oh, Papa God, Holy Spirit, oh my Jesus, we praise you, we bless you, and we thank you. Oh, Lord, in your compassion, pour upon us, your children, your precious blood, from the tops of our heads to the soles of our feet. Blessed Mother, wrap us in your holy mantle of love and protection to blind, thwart, and conquer the enemy. Chaste heart of St. Joseph, tear demons, protect and guide our faith. St. Michael, defend us in battle. All you holy angels and saints, pray for us. All you souls in purgatory, pray for us as we pray for you. Lord Jesus, we ask you to seal this conversation in your precious blood from its very beginning to its very end in your most holy name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I, I trust, trust in you. Crux sacra sit mihi lux. May the holy cross be my light. Non draco sit mihi dux. Iggy. Let not the dragon be my guide. <laughs> Vade retro satana nunquam suade mi vana. Sunt mala quae libas ipse venena bibas. Begone, Satan, never suggest to me thy vanities. What you offer is evil. Drink the poison yourself. Cadex! Yeah.
shines in the sky Eucharist is in my eyes Sending down Open, open the day he will come.